This video is brought to you by Ageless Geeks. Cowabunga dudes and dudettes, this is Anthony, aka BatBomb82, and today I'll be doing a review of the 1-6 scale Skeletor from Mondo. Now taking a look at the front, we can see some really cool artwork of Snake Mountain. And if we turn the box around, more of that incredible art making the box designed to look like it's Snake Mountain. And if we remove the lid, we can see an image of Skeletor in a purple iron cross. And if we turn the box back around, more of that awesome artwork of Skeletor, this time in full color. And if we open the lid, we can see the figure showcased in a window box packaging. And if we look closely to the inside of the lid, a short bio for Skeletor. So if you want to read that bio, go ahead and pause it now. So with the box out of the way, let's crack this figure open and see what we have inside. And here is Skeletor out of the box. And oh man, this is one I have been dying to get my hands on. I actually really like the He-Man from Mondo, but Skeletor is one that I just had to have in my collection. He is one of my all-time favorite pop culture villains, and getting him in this scale with this amount of detail is something that I've always wanted. But before we take a closer look at the figure, let's take a closer look at his accessories. So Skeletor does come with a good amount of accessories. Starting off, he comes with a Havoc Staff, his Axe, his Sword with a Sheath, and his Crossbone Sword. And lastly, we also get a Mondo Base Stand, the Puppy from the Christmas Special, two interchangeable head sculpts, and six interchangeable hands. So with the accessories out of the way, let's take a closer look at Skeletor. Alright guys, now let's take a closer look at Skeletor. This is one I have been dying to get my hands on from Mondo, and he's pretty cool. Now, much like He-Man, he's by no means perfect, but if you just love that more realistic look for these characters, you're totally going to dig this because he's pretty impressive. Everything about the details just looks fantastic. Uh, from the whole collar piece with the bat on the chest emblem, all the silver studs that we got here. I love his cross section across with the crossbones. You know, more like the vintage figure just had those crossbones, but this one has like a red gem in the center right there. I think it's really, really cool. When you see like the skin tone, uh, there actually is like an airbrush in there uh, to actually bring out the sculpt of like the muscles and things like that. It looks really, really cool. The skirt piece looks fantastic. We got that little like ram head on there. I think it looks so awesome. The skirt piece and the texture just looks really nice with the black, purple, and like this really deep gunmetal silver. Looks so good, dude. And like, you can see the legs, and you can kind of see more of that airbrushing in there with the muscle structure. Just looks fantastic. The boots look really nice too. Really dig all this. His big clawed feet. The patas look really good right there. And you can even see uh, this is actually a trademark of Mattel at the bottom of the feet like that. But all of this just looks really good. I like this so, so much. What I do also like is this cape. This cape is just massive. It's impressive. Uh, the material is nice and thick and it's layered. It's just so well done. Uh, you can drape it like over the shoulders if necessary. Uh, it has a real metal chain that goes across it like this to hold it in place, which is really cool. Uh, this is just a very cool looking piece, man. And it's very fun. I've been having a really uh, fun time like taking pictures of it. You can pull the cape around like this. And I wish this chain was a little shorter kind of just to kind of like bring it in a little more because when it kind of drapes over the shoulders, uh, it can be like pulled down too much. So I wish that chain was just a little more tighter, but you could do stuff like that. And the inside does have the black layering on there. So it's really cool, dude. I really, really dig this cape a lot. So I'm gonna take that out and you can see how tattered it is at the bottom. Just looks so freaking good. 
So I'm gonna take that cape off, put it to the side for a bit, uh, and just look at more at this figure because this looks really good. Again, the back of the skirt piece looks nice. We got those nice silver painted studs going across for holding on his uh, harness, and more of that but like bat style emblem like there just looks so good. Man, what a beautiful looking figure! So dope. Mondo really killed it with the aesthetics of this piece. All right, so now let's check out his accessories. Uh, so let's start off with those head sculpts. The head sculpts came out really good in my opinion. Uh, so we have the standard one here with the skull looking really cool. The teeth and the airbrushing in there to bring out the depth of the paint looks really good. And those deep sunken red eyes just look fantastic. The hood, in my opinion, all look really, really cool. Now we also do get a second head sculpt, which is a more vintage toy head sculpt. Now, I love this. I think it's a really cool idea that they gave it to us. Uh, again, much like the He-Man figure that we got before, it just doesn't really fit the aesthetic of this particular design because the figure itself is so much more realistic. Uh, getting that more toy accurate vintage head, uh, it just it just looks a little weird. Uh, so how are you gonna do this? You're gonna take the head off simply by a, a peg on the like uh, on the excuse me in the neck, uh, and it's a very tiny ball peg. For a neck joint, I think. I don't know why. It's the same thing with the He-Man. I just feel like these ball pins are way too small, but I mean, they work fine. You can get the uh, other vintage one on here like so, so you could have more of that vintage Skeletor look if you want to. One of my issues with this is, uh, with this particular head, since it's so much smaller and uh, not as tall as the other head, you can kind of see that how much bigger uh, the other one is. It almost looks like he has no neck, so it looks a little off. And if you want to, you can actually pull this part at the torso, because the torso is just on the ball peg, slide off that whole skirt piece, uh, and now you have him more in like the vintage trunks like so. So if you want a little more vintage toy feel, of course the vintage toy had a skirt piece too, but if you wanted to display him with the more vintage trunks, you can do that. I mean, I personally don't know why he would, but again, it is an option. Okay, so from aside the interchangeable heads, we actually do get interchangeable hands as well. Uh, so we do get a pair of closed-fisted hands, those are the ones that come packaged in the box. Uh, we do get a pair of gripping hands for holding all of his different weapons and accessories. Uh, and then we do get some more, like, uh, spell-casting hands, some yeah hands, like those type of things, you know what I mean? To make them, like, clawing and things like that. So I think this all came out really, really good. Now, one thing I will note... I feel like his wrists are extremely tiny. That's actually the first thing I noticed when I pulled him out of the package. I was like, why are his, why does he have such little baby hands? It looks ridiculous. Then I thought, well, maybe they're close fisted. It's not that big a deal. Uh, you know, but then I held up one of the more, like, again, spell casting hands. And if you look at these side by side, you can see that these more wide, uh, open fingered hands are way larger and wider than the closed fisted hands, uh, which these look way more accurate, and I'm not sure why these came out so small. When you can see the other hands, uh, they just look a lot better. Ah, and he just fell over, I'm sorry, Skelly. Uh, but they're just on pegs, really nice, actually sturdy pegs that you can get on there like so. I'm gonna put one spell casting hand on that side, and then I'm gonna take off this hand over here, and I'm gonna put on one of the gripping hands on this side. So these, luckily, hands work way better than the close fist hands again those are just way too small it's really weird and you may not notice it on camera so much but in person i noticed it right away uh even the gripping hands are a little bit smaller but not as small as the close fist hands uh so it's not too big a deal so luckily for me i'm not even gonna be using those i'm gonna be using these type of hands for everything else so very very cool i'm gonna sit him back here and show you what else we got uh so we do get the stand right here with the cradle we get the Mondo M like that at the bottom, which is really cool. Uh, all you do is take the stand right here, the cradle itself, peg it into there, uh, and this will extend if you need it to, and you can just rest them on there. Again, this is pretty average for any one six scale type of uh, figure for display. We also get this little fella, which I'm pretty stoked about. Um, this is one of those things like, this is such a more realistic take on these characters. And then we get a very cartoony animated character to go with him. Again, just like He-Man did. Um, we get the little dog from the Christmas special. Help me in the comments because I cannot remember this character's name. But I do remember it was the dog in that special. And that was that whole iconic scene. I am not nice. Like that thing. I think this is super funny. It's super good. 
clean skull, beautiful paint. Uh, the head is on a ball joint, so it does roll around like that, so you can get some uh, articulation out of that. But other than that, other than that everything else is pretty uh, static. It's more just a little statue. But that's super cool that we got it. I just don't know if it suits the design of this particular Skeletor, but I do think it's funny that we got this, and it's actually really, really nice. We also do get his axe. I love his axe with the giant orb on there, and this has a nice pearlescent white on top of that. Looks really cool with the wrapping going down the handle, the spike on the end just looks so super awesome. Now, if we check out the one from Super 7, this is the one that's based more on the original cartoon, and when we compare them side by side, we can see this more realistic take on it, and I think that's super awesome, man. Seeing how they took that original design and made it way more intricate and, more, again, more realistic, I just think that looks super cool. Okay, so we also get his little crossbone sword here. I've always been a big fan of this design for the sword. I just think it's really, really cool. But again, you can really see the intricate details of things like the blade, where you can see like little nicks and scratches. Uh, the weather paint looks so good, the wrap in the handle. Those bones look really nice. I love this a lot. And again, if we bring in the more filmation-like sword, we can really see the difference from the more original animated series to this more updated, like realistic version. And it's just really cool seeing those side by side, uh, just very contrasting sides. And I think it's really, really cool. One thing we got to show off is of course, his own power sword, which looks fantastic, man. Now it's almost the same thing as the one we got with He-Man. This time we got the more black with the purple wrapping like that, all looks really good. And if we bring in He-Man's right here, you can see the holster itself is pretty much the exact same thing. Uh, all done the exact same way, same sculpt, just painted differently. Uh, but the one where He-Man had like the Battle Cat head up here on the, on, the on the bottom, we have a more serpent snake-like head on the bottom of the Skeletor one, which looks really, really nice. We can take out the sword right here and look how dope that is, man. Again, that intricate detail of all the weathering and the, uh, the little nicks and the scratches and all that stuff, wrapping up the handle. Uh, we get a ram head on the, on the top and the bottom or the butt of this handle, whereas the one for He-Man, we got an actual skull. Uh, so it's actually pretty cool seeing those side by side. Uh, again, how they look very much the same, but you could tell they're obviously different being two sides of like the same sword basically and that's really cool i love that a lot now it still suffers from that same thing with these like little pegs that you would slide onto uh like the back of the uh, harness like so you know i'm not the biggest fan of how they designed that i think it's honestly kind of dumb uh and it doesn't work all that well it can work uh it's just not as good as i would like it to but still this is very impressive looking now, probably the favorite and best accessory, in my opinion, is this Havoc Staff. This thing is wicked cool. The detail on that ram head looks so freaking good. The paint is gorgeous. The intricate sculpting is amazing. You got the dry brushing that they wear like things like the nose and the sunken in eye sockets. Those ram horns look impressive. All the stud work and man, the wrapping of the handle. All this looks so good, man. Oh my God, this is this is easily one of the coolest accessories I've seen. All that just looks really, really nice, dude. This is so good. And it's nice and heavy. You know, the, the ram head up here is really, really heavy. And it's just so dope, dude. You'll see some pictures later on with all of his accessories. But man, this Havoc staff is super impressive. And hey, if we want to, again, we'll bring in the Filmation one like so from Super 7. Uh, again, you can see how contrasting it is from the original cartoon to this like modern release and yeah look at that that's that's insane what we could get for like a live action movie something like this would be perfect okay so now let's run down his articulation again so the head is on a ball joint kind of rolls around a little bit mostly gonna get left and right up and down a tiny bit and wobble side to side uh the jaw is a little bit articulated it moves a little bit but it's not all that great but it does move Arms can go full 360 all the way out. 
uh, up and outward to the side that far, rotation at the bicep. We got a single bend at the elbow. Uh, we get rotation at the wrist as well as a hinge at the wrist. Uh, we get a ball peg in the midsection right here, so that rolls around like so, does turn left and right, crunches back and forth and pivots side to side, as well as a waist swivel with that ball peg. And you can kind of even roll it around in there and do a little bit of things with that, so that works out pretty good. Uh, we got hip choice that only kick forward about that far, uh, back about that much, do the splits, about that far rotation in that upper thigh. Uh, we got a double, double jointed knee that bends about that far, which is pretty decent. Uh, we get a swivel uh, at the above the shin, just below the knee, so that kind of rotates like so. And then we get an ankle joint, let us go up and down, rotate, and a slight ankle rocker. It's in, it is hindered by the uh, cut of the boot right there, but nothing terrible. So overall, I really, really, love this again it's not perfect by any means it does have some weird choices and some weird things going on but i still think this is totally badass if you want a super awesome 12 inch skeletor then i think this mondo one is definitely one to pick up again not perfect but man he is very impressive just with his looks his sculpt his paint his accessories all that is really incredible and definitely worth your purchase so for a quick size comparison, here he is standing next to a Marvel Legends Deadpool figure, as well as a DCUC Batman figure. And for a skelly comparison, here he is standing next to the Filmation Skeletor from Super 7, and Keltis from the Four Horsemen. Also for comparison, here he is standing next to the 1-6 scale He-Man figure, also from Mondo. And just for fun, here he is standing next to Little Lego Bat Bomb. So there it is guys, my review of the 1-6 scale Skeletor figure from Mondo. Now overall I think this is an incredible figure that's very well done, but much like the He-Man from this line, he is by no means perfect. His articulation could be a lot better, his throwback head sculpt is a little weird and just doesn't really suit this design, and his close fisted hands are super tiny which causes it to look very awkward. But other than that, this guy is just one big beefy awesome action figure. Great sculpting, beautiful paint apps, I absolutely love his accessories, and overall just a really fun toy. And again, like I say in a lot of my videos, that's what I look for when getting a new action figure. That they're fun. And if you love Motu and Skeletor like I do, then I think this Mondo Skeletor is definitely and absolutely a must get. So please comment, like, and subscribe. Stay nerdy, my friends. Peace.